Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Business Podcast, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Kintal Shaw Warwick on the line, and she's principal over at KSW Consulting. Kintal, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Oh, man, so uh, exciting in today's topic. So six things to keep in mind when marketing overseas. You are the woman that I want to talk to about that, so this is good. Um, that being said, before we get into it, though, I want to um, talk a little bit more about what you're doing over at KSW Consulting. Tell us a little bit more about, about your firm, please. Sure. Thanks, Adam. Um, so at KSW, we really focus on um, marketing deliverables, uh, services, everything from building websites to um, marketing, overarching marketing campaigns. Uh, we do par some partnership development, and we provide cultural strategy and global market entry um, consulting. Fantastic. And uh, so I'm excited to hear today's topic. Um, that being said, for the listeners, first off, can talk to do a, a two, three-day seminar on these on these six points that we're going to try to encapsulate in this uh, shorter podcast format for you. Um, but so just to start out with, uh, Kintal, can you um, let us know a little bit more about the six things we should keep in mind um, when marketing overseas? Sure. Yeah, thanks. So, you know, um, I really started out working on very large-scale campaigns when I started my career so many years ago. And in the last few years, I've been working a lot with small businesses um, that have very specific and unique needs and often short-term you know, short -term needs. Mm -hmm. But when you're looking to market overseas, I found that across the board, whether you're large or small, these are some of the things that um, people really need to keep in mind. Um, so the first is uh, research and evaluation, you know, just understanding your market, your audiences, attitudes, behaviors, the competition. Um, you know, we're in a very data-driven era. It's, it's incredibly important to know, um, you know, what you're working with. Uh, but I think you also need, in addition to data, just accurate information and analysis to make really good decisions about how you're going to enter into a market and reach your audience. So, so that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is adaptation, you know, and, and you can look at that as localization and cultural strategy. So whether that's language, cultural nuances, taboos, understanding processes, and then the channels with which to build uh, a brand and engage audiences, um, you know, I can certainly give you examples at the end, but um, I think this is definitely very much front and center um, uh, at this moment in time as more and more companies do engage globally. Um, the third thing is building brand and consumer-driven messaging and content. So, you know, I think in the era of social, uh, social media, some companies, you know, sometimes fall into the trap of really just getting very, very caught up and engaged with how audiences are responding and feedback. And while that's important, incredibly important, I think it's also important to um, be able to continue to build your brand and communicate um, the value proposition of your brand and balance that out with um, audience needs and, and uh, how they're responding to your brand. Uh, the fourth thing is, this is the behemoth, you know, digital marketing. Um, there is uh, much more engagement via mobile and optimized e-commerce, um, which will only increase. And we can see that in, you know, the crisis that we're all going through right now. Um, so just to, you know, always keep in mind um, that your audience around the world, um, which a lot of them are increasingly using mobile technology because it's um, much more affordable and available uh, to just keep in mind that, you know, how, how are, will your audience be um, receiving you? 
And so definitely to keep that in mind. Um, social entrepreneurship. You know, there's so many opportunities to make an impact domestically and internationally. Uh, we are seeing that a lot right now where even small businesses are pivoting very quickly to meet the needs of those who have been impacted by COVID-19. Um, but then even once this particular crisis passes or, or lessens, um, I think there's going to be a lot of takeaways from that to uh, see how more businesses can incorporate very authentic um, social responsibility and entrepreneurship into their operations. And then the last thing is really be creative. You know, um, we are in a da data-driven world and it means a lot, but I think aspirational, inspirational, imaginative messaging is equally important. Um, I, I think in some ways we've resorted to painting by numbers when it comes to marketing, um, but creating unique masterpieces is there's still an opportunity for that. Um, some may love it, some may hate it, but it will be remembered. And I think when you're looking to go overseas, um, you know, it is really important to know the audience you're speaking to. But there are some universal themes and ideas and um, messages that can really resonate. And if you're able to do it creatively um, in an appropriate and relevant way, um, it is okay to, you know, color outside the lines. Uh, so those are, those are kind of my six tips. I love it. And, uh, and as I told the audience, I was like, man, we could spend, you could teach a seminar on this. I already know, but I do want, I do want to pull out, um, uh, one particular theme, um, on this and not to, not to oversimplify it, but, um, I know you have a lot of experience in this, in this area and I know that certain themes tend to arise, uh, over time. Mm -hmm. And I know it'll, it'll vary from obviously business to business, size of business, industry, all that other stuff. We get that. Um, but I know like on the digital marketing and branding piece, when people are going overseas, what do you find are some of those common mistakes where you're just like, ah, it's those beginner mistakes, um, that, that you, that you see people make over and over and over again? Well, I think it really comes down to the audience and competition. I think sometimes, um, particularly with smaller businesses, but even we've seen this even with larger brands, right, that they haven't completely had an understanding of the people that they're talking to. Perhaps they haven't found the best way to reach those audiences. So really understanding um, the local and the regional markets um, mm -hmm. You know, so that means like, okay, you might be a really successful brand domestically or in, or in very specific areas of the world, but then when you're trying to enter maybe a new market, obviously you're going to have to look at um, that landscape. What's worked in another region may not work there, right? I mean, it sounds so simple, and I think we talk about it all the time, but um, actually understanding it and being able to adapt to that is, uh, it takes time, you know, and I think it, you got to think in terms of not only um, short-term lead generation and sales, but then long-term relationship building. And that long-term relationship building is really based from understanding that market, knowing who your major competitors are in that marketplace, you know, and, um, so, so really having an understanding of that landscape. And just to give you an example, like this may be going off in a slight little tangent, but, um, you know, I am affiliated with the California International Trade Center, and we've been looking at emerging economies and market entry via e-commerce. And, you know, we know about China and India, Brazil and the EU, mm -hmm. um, and, and how advanced and, and digitally connected they all are. But, you know, under a new Pan-African Economic Free Trade Pact that um, passed in 2018, Africa is now the largest free trading zone in the world. They also have, happen to have the second largest digitally connected population. China is, of course, the first. Um, and China is the continent's largest 
trading partner, followed by the United States, India, and the UK. So now the question we have to ask is, um, do SMEs particularly know how they'll enter that market and communicate with an ethnically and culturally diverse region of the world that is also very digitally literate? Uh, literate. So, um, so you know, this is this is an example, and and I think really understanding that market on the ground is really important. Oh man, that is so exciting! I, I love that you bring that up, and, and and when you tie that into what you said about mobile, I mean, it's like you, you have to know mobile. There's a lot of people that are that are getting their internet and their device and, and their their information and shopping, doing all these things on mobile, and so to assume that you know it's just here, completely different, especially when you think about going abroad. So I mean, I love it. Um, all great information, Katal. So that being said. Um, I could, obviously, we talk about this all day long, but we're about out of time yeah. for this episode. So that being said, um, if somebody's listening to this and they want to learn more about uh, KSW Consulting, I mean, what's the best way for them to reach out to you and your team? Sure. They can definitely get in touch with us through our website, which is um, www.kswconsult.com, uh, or they can um, reach us through social on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, uh, or they can just email us and all our contact information is on our website. Fantastic. Well, Katal, really appreciate you coming on the show today and uh, sharing more about your background and all the great things you're doing over at KSW Consulting. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes store. And if you're listening to this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Business, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also uh, leave us some comments in the video. I mean, let us know what kind of things and projects you're working on. And Consult, thanks again for coming on the show.